What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Business and Biceps. And you better wake your ass up, because on today's show, we're going to talk about the multiple speeds. Yes, multiple speeds of change, Johnny. I think this is going to be an interesting topic for people. Man, I, I look forward to talking about it because I want to explore if there are multiple speeds. I, I see change moving at one speed and it is not the fastest and it really breaks people down. It tests their patience. But um, I think in different uh, in, in different categories, change does move differently. So I, I look forward to this. Yeah, one. I think in different environments as we've seen, we've got some really cool backstories of uh, big corporate stuff to personal stuff that I think we can share and add some really good context to this topic. So I'm excited to get into it. Yeah, 100%. John, we are welcoming one of the biggest partners we've ever had, which is NetSuite by Oracle, which Ooh. is a huge monster. Um, we used NetSuite back in the day at Muscle Farm to balance inventory in multiple warehouses. And basically their whole deal is you got to know your numbers. If you want to know your business, John, you always say that hey, stuff. That's a fact. And, and, and that's sweet to my understanding provides that phenomenally. I, I know you, you use them, but um, at the end of the day, right now, NetSuite's offering you valuable insights with a free guide, Corey. And the free guide is called seven key strategies to grow your profits. Okay. This is at netsuite.com slash biceps. Okay. It's that that's netsuite.com slash biceps to download your free guide. It's free. It's called seven key strategies to grow your profits. And remember netsuite.com slash biceps. Well done, Johnny. Well done. All right. Well, I can't wait anymore. I want to uh, introduce uh, Q and a and Mr. Butt life. I think it's time, John. Butt life where you at? Yeah. It's time for some mix a lot. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Yes, everyone, keep on sending us questions at Biz and Biceps on Instagram and Twitter. When we use your question on the air, we send out a free t-shirt for you. First question. But life, Q1, numero uno. I have been a film analyst, step below a scout, working remotely for an NFL team full-time for three years. I'm a 1099 employee. My boss recently wanted to increase my stipend $25 per week this coming cycle, but, but stated there was no money in the budget. I have redirected but to stating my improvement as a scout and citing my previous work and initiative as grounds for promotion. But at what point do I need to draw a line between putting my time in and accepting that I could just be cheap labor? Love y'all. We love you too. Um, how long did this gentleman say he's been doing what he's been doing? Three years. Three years. Um, here's the thing, man. Uh, I don't think you're in that kind of job, you know, working with sports, uh, having your foot in the door. If, you don't love it. Yep. People, who, people who get to that point where your foot's even in the door, um, I believe they have to have extreme passion to penetrate those kind of systems. And I think we have to, and, and you have to possibly put a higher value on the fact that your foot is in the door. I think you have to up your aggressiveness and it's ultimately on you um, if you are just cheap labor or you're someone they promote. You got to remember, p organizations, whether they be large sports teams or small businesses, what they're looking for is great people. So you got to show them that you're a great person and that you can contribute to their system. Um, I think it's fantastic and amazing that, you're, that your foot's already in the door, even though you're a 1099 guy, but you're communicating with people in a system that could provide you with the ability to work in something that most people dream of. And I'm sure you do. So I would, I would, uh, I would keep toughing it out, but I would ask myself, what can, what more can I do? What more can I add to this system to show my value? And I think things will start turning your, your way. Yeah. I have a friend that actually is a really good lifter that I know that does this similar job and he's in a similar position. And I think it's one of those things like how long, you got to ask yourself, how long would you play in the minor leagues to make it to MLB? Some motherfuckers play seven, eight, nine, ten years before they get the nod because someone's in front of them or it's situational or there's a trade that happened. It, it literally is a similar type of format. These are, in, in, and I think John, what John broke into, which was sports agency, like, or sporting agency, like, that's another one. Like, there's certain parts 
that are just super difficult to, I don't <laughs> use the word penetrate very often, but that's, <laughs> that is the truth. That is the penetration is part of life. Corey. It is. No, I mean, I, I said, I, I do In many different facets. I might do the act of penetration, but I don't talk about it. So what I, Oh, oh. no penetrate. So there's kiss and tell and there's penetrating <laughs> two different things. So what I would say is that look at it like, you Hey, know? three years, it isn't look, it might feel like a long time, but in reality to get into systems, your, your foot in the door, so difficult, uh, with big organizations like that. And to, to be a player in those type of arenas, man, a lot of these guys put in 10, 12, 15 years before they ever get a nod to a level of what you aspire. I, I would just say you probably love it, stay with it. And you just ain't your time yet. But if you can add more value to John's point, then your time will be there. Cause a lot of it's just like the time involved, man. You just, you just need more time. Agreed. Um, uh, but life, uh, Q2, uh, this, that would be numero dos. New listener here. Would you guys agree that entrepreneur- how you doing? What's his name? Um, Anthony, Anthony, Love, love up, the Anthony. name that was that was my confirmation name in the Catholic Church. Nice, Very Johnny, nice. dropping some okay. Catholic. Okay, Catholic okay. Confirmation so this is action. this is personal fucking information here. Okay, <laughs> would you guys agree that entrepreneurship isn't black and white, and building a personal brand can be synonymous with building a business? I feel like there's fields where personal branding is the channel to grow into success. Yeah, man. Uh, personal branding is tricky because pe- a lot of people don't understand the, the 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 simplest part of personal branding, and that's you. Okay, so I remember um, when I worked uh, uh, for ESPN, I did an MMA show for ESPN One Thousand Radio in Chicago, and um, I did a show. And the guy who created Mike and Mike um, helped me out with the show. And afterwards, I went in his office, and he was like, "Listen, he's like, why are you talking about?" yourself why are you talking about your experiences i'm like well that's how i was relating to the fights he's like until you've given to people so much until you've provided value for people and they really trust you and they really believe you and they really know you they don't give a fuck (laughs) So, so 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 i draw that parallel to personal branding you have to provide people with something very specific that they can take away and find value in over and over and over and over again. Once you do that, then you can start building your personal brand. But I think a lot of people miss that first part and they think if they start posting pictures and start posting quotes and get a video guy that you just build a brand by the look at me strategy. The look at me strategy doesn't help anyone do anything. Okay. So if you're not going to help people, you're, you're going to fail building a personal brand. So build something that has enterprise value that helps people, right? Where people could say, damn, that dude helped me for free. And then you can start putting some juice into the personal side of it. But until you do something for someone, no one gives a fuck, bro. Yeah, John, I think that, um, I'll piggyback off that answer. Really. If I think about how I ended up kind of building a personal brand, it was really by the giving out of all the fitness information for like every day, literally every day for probably about five years straight. And then that's when people started to say like, Oh, what else is this guy about a little bit? And now say like a little bit. Right. And it, it progressed, but it was also because of things like we're doing now. It was, it was constantly giving information that with the hopes that it would um, provoke either thought or motivation, or literally, you know, um, make them better in some way. It it really was, it really started that way. And then over time, as it grew, then it became like what you're talking about, where, where people start to care. So it makes sense if um, that guy saying that to you, because, you know, no one said that to me, but that would have been the exact same truth. If I came out, you know, day one of social media doing the same shit. What do you mean by came out, Corey? Uh, just came out the gate, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Out the gate. Yeah. So if I did it that way, then the same, that would have been the same talk I would have needed because at the end of the day, I had no track record, no background, no, no one had done anything that I had posted up yet. So you got to lead with the value. I mean, it's like the most basic thing. I think people jump right to I'm Gary V tomorrow. Look at me. (laughs) I mean, it's, it's really the truth, you know? So, and that's, that's, I think where a lot of the problems lie right now. So yeah, man, you got to find whatever, whatever craft you got, I would start flexing that stuff to, to help people. Um, if you believe you got it, 
um, and that, that could help this process. But other than that, just posting up quotes and shit ain't going to get you nowhere. Oh, very, very good uh, advice right there. But life, uh, Q3, that would be numero tres. Yo, Prof G and Dean J. <laughs> Dean, that means John's oh! my boss. That's kind of fucked up. Oh, that's kind of yes. fucked up. Yes, yes. Saying, who's this guy no, or gal? Fuck this guy. Fuck this, this guy. Jay, Jay. oh no. buddy, <laughs> this fucking guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got a new name. I am the Dean. I'm the fucking mean Dean, mean Gene Okerlund, Dean. Bro. <laughs> but go ahead. All right. Uh, recently, a good friend of mine brought me into his business to lead the sales efforts. The problem has been his lack of leadership. Recently, our <laughs> HR director got into a huge argument with a former employee on Twitter that got outright nasty. What? When I questioned my friend about it. Who is he, it, Donald Trump? Just <laughs> what the fuck is happening here? When I questioned my friend about it, uh, and his answer was, we shouldn't confront the HR guy. He said it was fine because our employees like him. Should I go over his head what? to make sure the integrity of the business isn't hurt? I'm lost. I'm starting to wonder if he's the type of person I want to be in business with. Uh, well, it sounds like you don't want to be in business no. with him here. I, I can't put all the pieces together right now because <laughs> this is like a fucking puzzle. Someone yes. throws at your face and there's like 2,000 <laughs> fucking things and you don't even have the, the cover of the box to look at to try to put it together. But what I'm going to tell you is the little things I'm hearing like Twitter feuds with Dude, their Dude, who's HR having Twitter director. feuds, bro, with their HR Dude, it's account. amazing. Oh, like what? they're probably walking in into like an 800 square foot office and and they're airing out their dirty laundry on twitter which is amazing because they're probably they're like on, sitting in, and breathing on each other and when they go to lunch and have their ham sandwich they probably sit next to each other and and they're, and they're feuding on twitter so um I, what i would say to this this amazing gentleman who knows how to identify talent clearly um what I would say to him is this does not sound like someone you want to do business with. Um, and you open with that. He doesn't give like clear direction or leadership. And if you're going to be, you know, in sales, you need to be trained. Uh, that's something that needs to be trained and needs to be drilled over and over again. So I would, um, I would gently find the uh, side door and uh, exit stage left. For, for anyone that thinks that having Twitter feuds with people that you work with is a smart idea is the fucking stupidest shit of all time. Because anybody that then goes to hire you down the road could see <laughs> your dumbassness. Like, what? Who the fuck's your having dumbass, Twitter? Dumbassness. Dumbassness. I mean, that's a go. fucking I word. It. I think, it's a word. I think I that... It. I don't even... I, I don't even know why Trump does it, first of all. I mean, I know because he's a fucking bully. But at the end of the day, it's like... To think that that's okay nowadays when everyone can see that shit for the rest of your career doesn't make any sense to me. It's so fucking stupid. Why are you Twitter feuding with somebody that you could talk Twitter to? Twitter feuding. You know, yes. when you, you each got fucking 20 followers and no one's looking at it anyway. You might as well just fucking <laughs> talk to each other. Get out of here. I can't even. Yeah, dude. I mean, but yes, yeah, so I think the writing's on the wall. You already answered your own question when you asked it. Um, it was a good question, but I think that um, I think you know the answer internally. <laughs> Jeez. Absolutely. I think it's time ah! for Fosco's world. Thank you. Uh, I got to talk to you, butt life, because what happened last time um, when everybody was cheering like they are now, you cut their uh, you cut their applause. You edited out their fucking applause, which went on for about 30 seconds or 30 minutes. One of the two. Um, but uh, thank you, everybody. I'm here. And um, we're going to uh, enter my world. Uh, so here, here we go. Uh, I think we talk a lot about, um, I don't want to say a lot, but we've talked about it before, about identifying traits of entrepreneurs, kind of, kind of the intangibles that maybe are not the most obvious things. And, and, and if you're listening and like a lot of people are thinking, you know, oh, am I, am I made for the corporate world or am I made to be an entrepreneur? One thing that I, I was laughing about the other day, just cause I, I, I saw some consistencies with other people. And then I thought to myself over the years, how consistent this bizarre trait is. Um, I just wanted to share it with everybody because I, I believe it is a, almost a defining trait of a lot of entrepreneurs. So if you're, if you're looking to profile yourself, here's, here's a little, little thing for you. So because we spend so much time, um, all day, literally mentally fatiguing, that's what I refer to it as mentally fatiguing ourselves about ideas, how to apply them, 
how to grow things, all, all these things that absolutely would mentally destroy the average person. If you're an entrepreneur, number one, you can endure that. But here's, here's, here's where I'm going with it. The, there's this thing that, that I have and, and many people have that's, that nobody would guess. And it's completely counterintuitive to someone who is viewed as um, successful or can put together a business or can put things together. And that's the absolute, like hilarious level of personal disorganization to the point where <laughs> you're an absolute fucking mess personally. Like your, you're like, like, like your, your house is filthy. You lose your keys. You can't find your fucking wallet. You're wearing the same fucking jeans for 18 days in a row. You don't, you're unaware of anything that doesn't directly relate to what stimulates your brain about whatever project you're on at that exact moment in fucking time. It's, it's, it's funny because at first I thought it was just me. I thought I was just so worn the fuck out that when I fucking got home, motherfucker, the bills could wait, the laundry could wait, the fucking vacuuming can wait, everything could fucking wait. And I, and, and, and I could be someone who, you know, is worth some decent money and I live like a fucking pig. I live like a fucking 19 year old in a, in a fucking frat house that was built in 1940. Okay. I live, I live like, like a mess. And, um, but, but, but when I get to, uh, you know, the office or wherever I'm operating from, um, I, I, I try to operate like a goddamn commander. Right. Uh, but, but then the opposite of that takes place when I'm at home and, and, and to see other people who, are very skilled and do very similar things and who are definitely entrepreneurs have the same trait, like to the fucking T like they couldn't do something at home. If someone put a, like, like here, if someone was like, Hey, fill out this piece of fucking paper <laughs> and send it to your bank because your <laughs> bank just shut down your debit card and you don't have access to your money unless you fill out this piece of paper, which is going to take 43 seconds, sign it and send it to your bank. Well, motherfucker, I can't get that done. There's no fucking way I can get that done. But I can fucking conceptualize an idea and turn it into a cash flowing machine. The irony there <laughs> is absolutely fucking hilarious, but it's true. It's true. And I talk to other people, obviously, Corey, me and you have talked um, yes. a lot about this. It's, it's amazing, but I think what it is, is that when you put out everything you have on a daily basis, you just don't put value on things that honestly probably should be valued, not as much as your business and stuff like that, but should be valued, but you just ain't got anything left in the tank. You got nothing fucking left. So if you're sitting out there saying, Hey man, like when I apply myself, that's exactly what I'm like, the, 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 that's why I'm talking about this. I'm not talking about this for me. I'm talking about this for you, the listener. Then, then you, you might have the makings of someone who can, you know, endure and last in, uh, in this game. So I, I wanted to share that because I always think about people who, who want to know, uh, it, it, if they got it. And, and I try to come up with little things that can help people. And that one hit me in the head the other day. And I was like, man, it's funny as fuck. But if you're not in your head like that's me, that I really do believe that's that's uh, that's an indicator. No, I think that uh, we have talked about this a bunch of times because the I have a lot of the similar traits. I always wondered for years why I'm so bad at fucking household items. Terrible at them, bro. Like getting them done. That's why I'm really glad I don't mow my own grass because it would look like a hayfield. I mean, like yeah. I'm so terrible at getting things done around the house and it's because of what you said john like it's like i just don't value the, the main difference is i've just had a wife for 20 years i mean that's at the end of the day like i've had someone else to help me with all these things that i would absolutely just not do because of how much we put into work and and growing businesses and those ideas it's taxing on your fucking brain. And then when you come home, the last thing you want to do is clean out the fucking gutters. 
you know what I'm saying? Like, or yeah. mow the grass or, and I know that sounds crazy to people, but it's the fucking truth. And, and I've always, and then, so it's crazy. Like when I would go stay with John, I would see exactly like in this, in his way, the same stuff that I do. Corey, how much it. carry out, how much carry out food uh, is in my refrigerator? It's, uh, I thought, <laughs> Hey, listen. <laughs> I got two stories. I, I have to tell him the towel story, John. Do you mind if I tell him? Oh, the absolutely. Towel? Good. Okay. So this, all is, about this it. Trey, you got to make sure you get this on tape. This is Trayvon, this is, Trayvon yeah. Dyer. All right. So basically I go to John's house um, and stay when I'm working in Charleston. And you know, most people, when you go to their house, they have some extra towels. Like when you go to take a shower yep. or uh, need, things of you that need, nature. You need those. Basic things like that. Uh, or, you know, sheets on the bed, sheets whatever, bed. things like that. So, but so I go uh, to the gym and come home in the morning. And after I'm lunging, I'm literally drenched. So I a lot of sweat. Take a shower. Yeah. So I go, John. I was like, Hey, is there any uh, is there any towels? And he goes, He goes, Oh fuck. And then and then he goes, Wait, hold on. He walks <laughs> over to his dishwasher first, right? And the towel I used last time I was there is a catch all at the bottom of the dishwasher because the dishwasher is it overflowed. Uh, it's overflowing. Yeah. So he holds it up and he looks at it and the whole bottom of it's soaking wet. And he goes, well, a lot of suds. I don't think this one's going to work. And he drops it. Dropped it. Then he goes, hold on, hold on. I got another one. There's a pile of clothes in his hallway that you're not sure whether, <laughs> listen, hold on, <laughs> that you're not sure whether they're <laughs> clean or dirty. I have no clue. So he, so he goes like this. He goes, wait, there's one under here. And yep. he holds it up to him and he goes, but it's a little, little damp. Little, yep. Not even wrinkle, a little damp. I go, a little damp why too. is it wet? And he goes, well, it's clean, but my dirty clothes from the gym been laying on it. Correct, correct. So, and I was like, okay, I'm not using that one. He goes, I got one more option for you. And so then he goes to his room. And now I appreciate this offer because he goes, I only used my towel once. <laughs> you can use it. And I, go, <laughs> I said, so it's good, I go, bro. It, it, it's, already, <laughs> it's already dried. So I go. I go, John, I think this, <laughs> I think I'll use my extra t-shirt I got in my back <laughs> as my towel, I but let's try to wash them. today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's try to wash them. Let's try to, let's try to do the wash tomorrow. today before we work. <laughs> <laughs> so if that gives you an indicator, oh, but boy. the funny thing about that whole process what is- What I'm talking about. If the, the amazing thing about that whole process is I would be no different <laughs> if I didn't have a wife. <laughs> hundred percent. That's why I don't take it. Like I would zero take offense to that. I think it's hilarious. And I'm just looking at a mirrored image of myself. Without yeah. <laughs> yep. What do you have to say about that, John? Hey, that th th this is what I'm talking about. I, so hey, good, I, though. I, I how, can, how good was that exchange though? It was oh, amazing. I, here, I can tell you this, right? I have a bed frame for my bed. That's very, very easy to, to put together. Okay. So I have uh, lived in my uh, location where I live currently um, for over six months. I, I, I'm currently uh, basically sleeping on a mattress. I, I haven't put the bed frame together. And my back is suffering because of it. But for some reason, I always tell myself, hey, it'll take three minutes. Do it Tuesday night. You know, uh, haven't done it. And um, I got like a box spring and this mattress that just fucking sags down because there's no frame on it. And I've been talking, uh, at least in my own head, about putting it together for about six and a half months. So, so good. Mm -hmm. But just know that this is a normal, uh, this is normal trait of a lot of entrepreneurs, John. I mean, 100%. <laughs> like I, I, I've seen actually when people, uh, I mean, I guess there's probably a host of entrepreneurs that are ultra neat and got their stuff together. I but think I that's more CEO-ish, yeah, less entrepreneur-ish. I, I, I would agree with you like that too. But I, the most of the guys that I know, they're dysfunctional on other regular normal items though. Yes. I, I, I referenced this study before once and it's it's incredibly true. They said, they said they talked about um, uh, three guys, obviously I remember Jobs and Zuckerberg, but they wear the same outfit every day and they both gave the same answer without knowing what the other one said. It's one less thing for them to think about. Yeah, That's why they, they wear the same outfit every day. Well, Jobs, rest in peace. But that's, that's why they did one less thing to think about. One less decision. You only got so many in life. It, Exactly. And if you're all about your business, then that's just, that's just how it goes. And, um, a lot of things go many different ways when we're in Fosco's world, but when we yield, okay, before we make a left in Newark and, you know, catch up with the, BM, yeah, with the BM, BMX mafia, um, we find our way to Corey Gregory.
All right, Johnny. Thank yes, you. Corey. Um You're very welcome. You know, as um as a professor now, John. And I'm a dean now. Too. In a in a esteemed community college at Columbus State. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been really uh thinking more and more about as I've been in some of these meetings and some of these things, uh just the wild difference of how we, we already know this, but uh being in some of these environments, it's just even more so true about how wildly differently we think and compared to that kind of very structured you know especially academic academic world yeah and um it's just and so i've been studying a little bit more about that those brain waves and I, i'm not saying everyone's like this but this was just something i found um on an article i was reading i thought it would have some value to the listeners and it's basically called growth mindset versus a fixed mindset and really what that kind of um and there's some people in the corporate structure that still have a growth mindset in their own way but there's a lot most of the people probably have more of a fixed mindset um and basically you might have one of these or you might have a group of both and either way so i'm going to read you some of the um kind of variables so in a fixed mindset we'll start with that one it's like uh it's basically like leads to a desire to look smart and therefore the tendency because you're always trying to look smart or act like you're smart or show people you're smart. It's like when you have challenges, you tend to avoid them because if you're not very good at them, then you don't look as smart. Huh. You, um, you give up easy on obstacles a lot because the vulnerability of, of some type of failure, which makes you not look smart. Your effort, you don't take um, as much, uh, th there's not like as much inf, uh, oomph on an effort because once again, you're not going after challenges or obstacles. You're kind of staying in your lane because when you're comfortable in that mindset, then there's no, there's not as much room for error because you've got these things that, that you're doing. So you don't put a lot of effort outside of what you got kind of going on and you kind of just ignore criticism because you think it's everyone else's fucking problem, not yours. Right. And then you got the growth mindset, which is definitely more entrepreneurial and it's like the desire to always learn and get better. And you embrace challenges. You uh, persist when you see setbacks. You have uh, a constant eff effort towards mastery. And you learn from criticism. And I think that these are starkly two different ways to think. But when I just read those items, it, it, it absolutely you know, starts to show a path on how people operate. And it's interesting because there's people that have amazingly high IQs, but they're so scared to like. be so scared to be wrong that they they really don't a lot of times push themselves. And then you got other people, which I fall in this category where I don't believe my IQ is anything crazy at all. I'm not very good at anything school related, but I've never been afraid to go and fucking try shit and just figure it out because I never looked at failure as like some final thing. It's like information that you're just receiving on how to do shit different. And I never put a ton of value on that because I really just thought, well, this is part of the process. I've got to fuck some stuff up along the way. And I think that um, just, you know, as the listener, I wanted to kind of lay it out so you could hear it that way and start to see like, which way do I think? And, you know, those, these are probably natural patterns, but if you're aware of them, you could start to see like maybe I could push myself in this area a little bit more over that area and not let myself do this just tr like just default to a certain thing that puts me more in a fixed mindset if I truly do want to grow. So I just thought it was some interesting information and just wanted to kind of hear your thoughts on it, Johnny. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I think it's uh, very reflective of the the corporate and business world, right? You have yep. you have these large corporate structures where, you, okay, the, a fixed mindset, if that's what we're referring to it as, it's yep. about maintaining a position and a stature and who you are um, from an outside perspective to everybody. So if everybody thinks you're the master of fucking marketing, you're not interested in taking a chance fucking blow up the next biggest, newest, most amazing, most innovative marketing campaign. You want to rest on your laurels because you did something once. And by taking chances to push 
the motherfucking ball forward. And by not maintaining what you have, you're taking a risk because what if it doesn't work? So yeah. you will rest on your laurels. You will refer to your one success. You will try to teach people based on your one success, but you will sit back and not take chances. To me, those people are what I call yesterday's news. They offer me nothing. They offer me mm. nothing. I think they have no fucking value because they're not really in the game. They talk about, it's like a retired athlete. They talk about the yeah. days they used to play. And everyone's tired about uh, tired of hearing that. It's a it's a what have you done for me lately? So when when we're talking about you know the, these mindsets, the, the growth mindset is a mindset of what can we do today to build for tomorrow, and then tomorrow, what could we do today to build for tomorrow? And we have to take risks. And it's not about being smart. Being smart is the dumbest thing to ever want ever. Because if I if I find out I'm wrong about something. That means I just learned something, right? So, so, oh, I thought this way. I'm fucking wrong. Shit. Now I know what's right. I literally know. So I learned that's a positive, not a negative, but the ego will tell us, oh, people are going to look at me like I'm dumb. Well, if that thought exists in your head, that's going to be what holds you back from adding things to your resume and continually adding things to your business and whatever you're doing in life. This is, this is the scared mindset, the ego-based mm -hmm. mindset versus someone who truly wants to increase and change and get better. This is a, literally, this is about truth versus like a false attitude. I, I mean, period. Yeah. Yeah, I think it laid it out real well. And I mean, I think that um, I just could identify with people I've had challenges with thought the other direction, like 100% dead on. And then people I've always had, you know, better, you know, better uh, relationships with or worked better with had more of that, the other mindset. What's so interesting, John, and I, I'd like to know your take on this. Are we, are we just born this way? Do you believe that? I do. I do. The, the, really? Yeah. The, 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 I mean, the more we've been asking that question and I think it's, a, I keep asking yeah, myself no. it because I just, I just don't remember only thinking this way. Like I feel like I learned it, but maybe I didn't. I really don't know I, that. About I believe that mm. it's, it's in your DNA to believe in yourself. So when you're doing something that's abstract, like what entrepreneurs do, uh, it's abstract. It doesn't exist. So there, you have to have this uncanny belief in yourself. That's a, a shield from doubt. Mm -hmm. And it's a shield from all these things. I don't think that's inserted from uh, getting a degree or, 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 or talking to people. Now, if you have that and you go through certain life experiences, I think it just makes you more battle tested and it makes you a nastier motherfucker and it makes you a harder opponent to defeat. But this, this obscene belief in yourself or belief in what you see before it's a reality. I don't, I don't think that can be taught. Yeah. I've always had this just unbelievable faith in myself that I Ditto. would, you know, and it's like, uh, and Carnegie talks about it too. It's called applied faith. Like it's one of the things that you have to have if you want to be successful, because if you don't believe in your fucking self and believe you'll get it done or, or figure out the problem and the solution and all these things, then no one's going to fucking do it for you. But I, I just don't, I don't know where it comes from. So maybe it just was there. Yeah, it, 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 exactly. And, and, and I've referenced this quote before, but one of my favorite quotes is uh, uh, when Mark Cuban was talking about when he was younger, if anybody had a job that paid money, he would take it because his mindset was simple. If somebody else can do it, why can't I? So if I, if I know nothing about this job, if someone else can do it, I believe I'm smart enough to be able to do it at their level or better. And I, I, I yeah. truly believe that that's, that's a, a mindset that you're kind of just born with. Interesting. All right. Good. Great. Uh, great feedback, John. I think that topic yeah. is really cool. Yeah. Um, all right. I believe it's time. Oh! For the main event. <laughs> Ring the bell, Jeremy or butt life, whatever the fuck you are today. All right, Johnny. So listen, people hear the word change and they fucking freak out straight up right oh absolutely and pee down their leg we were 
they peed on their leg. And we're, we all know that change is ever present if you want to get better. But there's, I think, in, uh, in different environments, there's different speeds of change. I think we're going to debate that a little bit or sure. kind of chat about it. Sure. So, man, I, I'll throw it to you and kind of let you get started, dude. I, th- I, I think this, this is a fucking amazing topic because yeah. once you meet at whatever point in your career or life, once you get face-to-face with you as the individual wanting to be the catalyst, for something to change, that's when you truly understand, in my opinion, um, the speed at which the human mind can process new ideas. And in my in my experience, in my take, is that it is frustratingly bordering on extreme uh, anger. Uh, in regards to the pace that people's mind can conceptualize and accept change. So you can see something as someone who wants to improve or grow a business or add, you could see something as clear as day and it could make all the sense in the world. But what you're going to deal with is people who have the ability to make decisions. They're going to hear you, but they're not going to see it the way you see it. And, and they're not going to understand it initially. And if you stay on it and you keep proving that it makes sense and you keep bringing data and research, da, 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 it could take two or three years <laughs> to get something done that you literally brought up like the same way in fucking 2019 that you brought up in 2022. But in 2022, it finally clicks. And all that is, is a product of human beings' willingness to change how they do things. Everyone think about their day. Think about their day. Think about how, think about how much of a motherfucking creature of habit you are. Cool. Well, I am. Fl- fl- yeah, flip <laughs> it inward. Flip it inward. Your brain operates the same way. Your brain sees thing, things through a very, very narrow lens. And another thing I think uh, that's a trait of great entrepreneurs is understanding that as individuals, we see things through a very narrow, biased, personal lens. So when we're hearing new ideas, we depersonalize it. We take ourselves out of it and we let the idea live on its own. I think that's what great entrepreneurs do. I don't think that's what most people do though. Yeah. I think that, um, here's what's hard for me to process, right? Like I was just in a board meeting, um, at the college and we were literally, this is a second, it's once a year and it's the second time I got to go to it as an alumni and now professor and Dean. Yes. Dean John was not, not there. Dean Kurt was there though. Oh, I was, was, my point. I was watching on a webcam, bro. <laughs> so the thing is a lot of the things on the agenda were literally the same as last year. Of course. And, and I was like, so I, I literally, I can't keep my mouth shut. I'm a fucking mess because that's just how we operate. And I'm like, I said, yo, Kurt, which is like one of the main dudes, like Dean of something. I said, Kurt, fucking who you got to slap to get this shit changed? Like, what are we still talking about? The same shit that we talked about last year. Like, what the hell are we doing? And, 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 and he looked at me and he goes, I like Kurt. He's really, he's a really good dude. He helped me, you know, be able to teach, but he goes, he's more bottlenecked by so, so, so. And I'm like, but this is the main problem that everyone in this fucking room knows is a fucking problem. <laughs> why are we not? Why are we not punching somebody in the fucking face? God to damn it, Kurt. Shit? Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, and, and I literally said that in the meeting and everybody's looking at me like, Oh shit. I'm like, I'm like, guys. And then the one lady goes, Corey, she goes, now you are understanding the difference between the business, meaning like your business and how you can operate it to get shit done fast and how private sector structure, exactly how we're struggling. We know it's a problem. We feel the same way that you're saying, but we can't get it done currently we're trying and it takes this fucking long and then i started to say like i said look we got this many students there's this many people in our program and this things are happening if you look at it like a business which every college is the dude who's calling the shots which i haven't met yet but i'm going to 
we're a small piece of his balance sheet. We don't mean anything to him. That's why we're not getting anything done. Y'all want to mean something. We got to be a bigger spot on the balance sheet. That's just what it is. Money talks. And right now y'all ain't talking. And so he don't care. And that's, and, and, and I said, money that's talks why. and I got a megaphone dog. And that's it. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think that these bottlenecks that people keep like literally to get this change, this one item, I guarantee John, it's going to take like what you said, it's going to be a three to four year process that would make me bald literally hey, because hey. I'd be so fucking stressed. Like if this was my main job, the, the struggle of that, that power structure, dude, it's, it's unbelievable. So I can start to identify a little bit more with some of the corporate people out there that have to do these things. That's truly like the speed of change that John and I can say tomorrow, our strategy and X business is going to be this. And let's see how it goes to do that in a big power structure could literally take three years. John and I can do it in 24 hours, potentially like there is a stark difference between those two things. And gosh, dude, I would go crazy if I had to wait that fucking long, John. It's unbelievable. Let, let, let's compare it to what we always compare things to sports. So yep. if, if, if an NFL team didn't have the ability like Peyton Manning did so amazingly to call audibles, which is a change Omaha. of strategy Omaha. on the fucking spot. If they didn't have the ability to go in at halftime, completely change the plan that they came in with during the game. Okay, so so you got these big power structures that that change over the course of you know two three years, and then you have these things right NFL not for long right. They're a business as well. They literally need to make changes on the every minute every minute to perform at such an elite level so people can still make millions and millions and millions of dollars. And if they don't make changes, they're out. Coaches get fired. We all know coaches last no time in sports because they're not making changes quick enough. So compare those fucking two. Business is just like fucking sports. You see fucking things coming. You see a fucking lineman coming your way or a fucking, um, you, you know, a roadblock in, in front of you in business. You got an audible. You got a fucking audible. You got to make a change because if you don't, you are going to get sacked. But these big power structures, they start accepting the sacks. And then here's what they do. Oh, I'm going to bring in Tina from the sack department. Last year, we were sacked 293,000 times. This year, we're down 4%. And all the fucking nerds in a room, they fucking clap. And they got glasses on. And they're all fucking carrying Starbucks like a bunch of fucking whatever. And, um, so, so that, that, that's what happens. They just put statistics to them and they say, oh, we're, we, you know, we, we, we're down 4%. So, you know, we're only getting sacked. I don't know, 271, whatever it is, you know, it, it it's a fucking joke. It's a joke. And, and, and this is a question I have for you, Corey, how, mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is uh, just an honest question after hearing you talk, how could you deal with that shit? Like, like, like we got so much shit going. Like, how could you even deal with that? Like I'd go fucking crazy and I'd be like, peace. Well, I did. Well, the thing is, it's like, it's really not my job, right? I'm just an advisor. So all I do is like stir up everything. So they, they want me there because I think I offer one, I'm one of the more successful people that's ever come from the program. So I said, you know, two years ago that I would sit on the advisory board. We only meet once a year and I offer my two cents as an advisor once a year, which I offered yesterday. And I think that what I do for the group is just make them wake the fuck up and say, and I think they're awake. And I think they wanted the change, but I think my aggressive, like I look like you there, John, basically, you know what I'm saying? Like to that sure. group, like I'm the aggressive business guy that's thinking like, what the fuck are we doing? So I think it just offers that entrepreneur business mind of like more like, let's do it now. And, and it, it literally, I can see that it motivates everybody, you know, and they did make some progress on it. And I'm not saying that these people are like slouchers by no means, because they're really not. They're really, at, and that's what I... I like about the group is they are progressively because you know, the reason why I feel this way, man, is because Columbus state, what it did for me was John, I didn't know where I was going, man. I, 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 I know I wanted to lift weights and try to be a trainer, but I needed more than a weekend course, but I could never make it through a four year degree. And so, and I wanted to come to Columbus. The reason why I feel a certain way about that school is because it literally offered me the exact thing I needed, which was a one-year program to meet people in this area, to get started, to to learn things I didn't know because I was taught by magazines, to 
um, have us, you know, have a direction with something I could afford. And there's a lot of people that need a skill, especially nowadays in that, uh, that's why I feel passionate about it because I needed that program. Like, could I have got a weekend certification and ended up somewhere to train? Yeah, maybe, but it literally, when I, when I found out what was available, it was my perfect scenario for that time of my life. And so that's why I feel like I'm not fighting for the school or fighting for these other people. I'm really fighting for other kids that might be like me that couldn't afford to go to a four-year school that just wanted an opportunity and that could, could afford to spend three or 6,000 to get just enough skill to get into the workforce. That that's really what, who I'm fighting for, to be honest with you. Oh, no, no. I, I, I get the, uh, the good fight and, and that, and, and yeah. that is, uh, but the other part, yeah, it drives me crazy. Yeah. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's just once you, uh, have been playing this game for, you know, well yeah. over, uh, a, a decade going on too, it, there's, yeah. a, there's a certain way, there's a certain order of operations that are so, um, black and white in terms of the need to audible, the need to change, the need to yes. look at data and then move and not waste days and time is of the essence that yep. if you're in that situation, it's, it's the pure, uh, I guess, tolerance of you're wasting my motherfucking time. Well, what I don't, so what I offer in that time period, which is only an hour once a year, is that, that push that I think everyone, you know, needs to some degree. And I think that I offer just a completely different viewpoint. That's not just shaking and nodding. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of people on advisory boards, they're like, they want to tell people they're on an advisory board and they just go there and shake and nod. Instead, I'm the person that's like shaking my head the opposite way going, are you for fucking real? And the you, you would see the looks on my face, but you know what? It, but I like the flip side of it, John, because then I think about how we operate, and I get a dose of what's happening in those type of power structures. And I just, I'm so thankful <laughs> that we do what we do, bro. Like it's just so amazing comparatively. And um, yeah, I just think I offer a dose of help, a hope, and uh, and push. And so that's kind of my role, I guess you could say. And and I think me being there, even that once a year, definitely definitely helps as of now people were excited to see me i could tell and then the shit i'm offering up i think sometimes i'm saying things others won't right sense. well i'm yeah <laughs> I, i'm sure that and you and you i think you represent that uh, uh you probably represented <laughs> yes. that at times in your life right uh, like or, or almost every day yeah. or always yeah. so i mean you will you know and and as i've gotten more confident and done business like you said almost going on two decades now and been working with you for as long as i have i'm becoming in my own way that more direct person especially in those solid wheelhouses of mine of exercise in this profession and that i know what i know and and i'm confident about it so i go straight down the middle not quite as aggressive but pretty fucking close that's why i said i almost like came out of that meeting feeling like more like you and less like the old me but this is the new me that that is offering my information because i know i know i'm i'm confident about it sure. and I know shit's wrong. Yeah. And so uh it's it's been an interesting transition, but it's all probably based around just, you know, the confidence. But the speed that I'm coming I'll come back to real quick is is so slow that there's no way that could ever, right. ever be my actual job. Meaning like there's no way I could ever move that slow daily I would feel like I would want to literally jump off a bridge because it would drive me that crazy. Like I just, I don't even, it, it doesn't even like enter my brain in that manner. And it would be extremely frustrating to where, yes, there's no way that I could ever do that more than like once a year. I would drive me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, just and I feel for people that are in those structures that just deal with them because I don't know how you do it straight up well yeah and 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 if you're feeling uh, i i maybe maybe this is an entrepreneurial identifier as well but if you're feeling that like the lack of change is holding you up so severely that like you're a motherfucking thoroughbred but but they won't let yeah. you out the starting block you're in the gate <laughs> yeah and and, and 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 you just keep getting that feeling i think that's a big indicator that that maybe you are made to go on your own because anyone who yeah. has strong ideas that wants to get them in play so fucking bad and, and really has them figured out and is being held down. Well, at a certain point, 
f- fuck it, man. Like, like I, 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 I yeah. everyone knows who listens to this show. I, I'm not the biggest encourager of people to go out and be entrepreneurs because I think people, it, it's so underestimated how, how tough, how tough things are uh, personally in and, and through business. But if, but if you're the guy who's saying, dude, this, this is fucking me. I cannot stand the lack of change. And these ideas I have, man, they're, they're from A to Z, dude. I've vetted them and, and no one will listen to okay well then dude or 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 or, or gal make 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 the move go go out on your own like i i think that's just a great indicator uh for for the listener to take away no i like i like where you took that john cuz i i agree because every fucking ounce of me feels the opposite way from when i'm hearing that stuff you know what i'm saying right. like the, i couldn't deny that i'm not an entrepreneur during that type of meeting for one fucking second to the point where it's almost like almost like i'm i'm like on fire you know what i mean so if you feel that way that's that's a great way to take this talk because i think it's another good indicator you're like not just want to get your idea out there because you think it's right but because you need some fucking change to try to figure out the process what is right you know just getting things in place and um it was once again i love experiences like this that are you know, not very often, but they're, you know, they're uncomfortable in a, in a weird way because it's just so different than how we do things. And it's good to see the other side, John. I, yeah. I mean, I think it is good to see the other side. Now, when it comes to just the teaching part, that's just like what we do here. So that, that shit to me is easy and it feels very natural when it's the organization type stuff. Like, like I said, it's, it, it was wild, but, but cool to see. But I think showing people today with the, just the overarching just amount of information that we brought on this podcast between the two different mindsets and the things you were talking about, which is an indicator, which is hilarious. And these things that are indicators, they all kind of worked off of each other. I think it was a really valuable show for the listener to, to really yeah. go back to the old entrepreneur, entrepreneur. Like, I think these are all indicators towards that stuff, bro. Yeah, no, listen, entrepreneur, entrepreneur reference. Lo- lo- John's favorite book. Love it. Uh, am I embarrassed of it? Yeah. Do people still reference? <laughs> it has helped. Yeah. John, it, it has helped people though. Hey, I mean, it's it helped has. people. It's a, it's a h- hilariously underprepared product <laughs> that was put out, but some people accepted it and, and liked it. And hey, John, guy, happy, happy we could fucking help because John uh, liked it so much that he left <laughs> An entire box. I left the box in his old house. house, uh, There was, uh, there was, uh, and I can do better than this. Uh, I didn't know audio books had fucking chapter breaks. Um, And we just were talking. But anyways, um, let's transition before we go to uh, Corey the Fuck Off Live. Um, I would like to know, uh, you you, you know, you're talking about these uh, meetings that, you know, this meeting you had. So I'm going to imagine that there are people in those meetings, you know, the school meetings, if you will, yep, that are, you know, it, when viewed by, uh, let's say, anyone in public, they're, you know, maybe undesirable, whether it be their, their clothes, I mean, that are just outwardly smelly, they have stains on them, uh, maybe they're not new, or their appearance is uh, just kind of, you know, like they don't take care of themselves. Can you tell me a little bit about the people in that room? Uh, no, it's not not really the way this room looks at all. It's actually super professional, um, built from a lot alum- of Versace alum- models in there. Alumni from like myself and some current staff. So, no, it's not really not really the style of the of the room, and that's kind of why I I think I push to say like, yo, we need to expect more. Um, out of these things that are challenging for the program, like a lot of dockers in there, or like what's the what's the, uh, yeah, just just professional attire. I mean, it's not really my style to to really comment on that stuff anyway. So, I'm well, not I'm not saying it's bad. Thing. I'm just wondering <laughs> if it's dockers or Hagar, Hagar, Hagar. I don't I don't know the difference between dogger. And I don't I don't I either. Thought. I just thought they. Were yes, you do, John. I thought you wear them when no one's around. No one's That's around. what I know. Yeah. You do wear you wear dockers yeah. when no one's around. around them. And you yeah. wear a red hat, not a black I'm one. I'm naked, bro. That you wear a red goes. hat. That's how it goes here. So, <laughs> um, all right. Well, if you're if you're not going to uh, let us know, just at least how the staff looks, you could say, hey, they look they look great. You know, two of them wear top hats. You know, uh, yeah, no top hats. But John, let, let me let me ask you something yes, sports related absolutely. though. You asked before okay, we got absolutely. on who won the NBA championship, 
And I mean, the Raptors won. Kawhi Leonard is now a two time NBA champ, two time defensive player of the year, and two time MVP who barely talks. Absolutely. Is this so? Two things. The first thing I thought when I heard they won this morning, because I actually fell asleep at eight o'clock last night. Yeah. I'm, I, I missed the game interesting. Well, yes. And uh, was if LeBron stays in Cleveland, does he win this championship? Or is the Raptors, is this situational? And a lot of guys are hurt, and Kawhi is really great. I'm not saying he isn't, but is that the Raptors there with Kawhi, or is that LeBron there with Cleveland winning this championship? If he's not even close, inch- bro. Uh, that's and I, I, you watch a lot more NBA than me, so I thought that'd be an interesting. I, take. I think Kawhi Leonard is so it's he's so there regardless. Easy for people to take away from him, you know, saying sure. oh. Golden State got injured. Well, they had Durant for a couple games. Boogie fucking came back. Yeah. Okay, Clay Clay went out in the third. Would at, would, listen, Golden State, literally, their starting lineup is – it's not an, an all-star team. It is a it's a, it's a goddamn Olympic team. All-NBA team. No, seriously, it's an <laughs> Olympic team. You tell me one of those guys that wouldn't make a fucking Olympic team. It's a fucking yeah, Olympic true. team. And, um, you know, nothing but love to uh, our friend Nick Swinmurn, who's, uh, you know, in on the yes. Warriors. But, you know, to see a guy like Kawhi Leonard, who is truly the best two-way player in basketball, you know, people need to understand, yeah. I was telling uh, Jay this yesterday, that all defenses, all these guys are athletic freaks in the NBA. All defenses sure. in the NBA is is effort. That's it. That's it. Like I want yeah. to play defense. Most of them want to get the highlight dunks. So when you got a guy yeah. like Kawhi Leonard who wants to play defense as much as he wants to score, I mean, dude, Toronto was was good. Toronto was was really good. But to think that they could take out the fucking Warriors, it, it yeah. is unprecedented. And what change did they make? They made one. They made that guy. Um, so that guy, I think he's one of the most interesting. Uh, people in sports right now because he he actually is in this era of pure narcissism it's all about me this guy doesn't want to talk you know what he just fucking wants to do his talking through his actions and then when the game's fucking over fucking a i'm gonna go home i'm gonna do my thing like we need more Kawhi leonard's in this world and in sports because that's the example that fucking young kids need not fucking some big fucking trash talking motherfucker you know Kawhi just gets it done and he beats you bitch well and he uh gave a great um speech uh after or after the game when he was asked questions and he said look man this year was super rewarding for me. People were talking so much shit on me, saying I wasn't hurt, saying I didn't, I'm not a team player, saying right. this, saying that. He goes, and he said this. He goes, I relied on my support system, and I know who I am. He said, I don't care what the media says about me, whether I scored 22 or 30, or I, I, I'm acting like I'm hurt, I'm not hurt. He said, I don't care about any of that stuff. He said, check this out. When I'm not playing the game of basketball, I don't feel good. Because it's what I love to do. Do you think that I would want to sit on the bench? Of course not. What I want to do is what you guys just saw me do. And he's like, this was just a combination of all of that adversity that I went through. And it just it feels really good to be a, a two-time champion, to do it for Toronto. And he goes, when I got to Toronto, I, t- I explained everything to him. And they was on board from day one. And he goes, I did not want to hit that floor until I knew that I wasn't going to come back in five games and get hurt again, that I could be the same player or better than I was before, and that I expected that out of myself. And that's what I was able to give um, to Toronto, the Toronto Raptors, and we're NBA champions. And I was like, man, that was fucking legit. He's, he's, he's about, he's about <laughs> his business, you know. About his business, you know? dude. I mean, I love it, right? I. I like outlandish motherfuckers too. I always have. I think I'm not sure why. I've always liked the Deion Sanders of the world and AI. And I've, I, I don't know. I've been drawn because there's stories. Like that. There's stories behind him. When a guy yeah. like Kawhi Leonard, you don't know anything about him. You just see his actions. Yeah. Yeah. He fits the Spurs. I mean, if you think about it, really, right? He's like Tim Duncan type. Don't talk, just produces. And that's not what everybody's drawn to toward nowadays. But the respect of his answer exactly. and him just giving a little bit of insight. On that was really cool, and and I appreciate it as a, just a basketball fan in general, and just my respect level just skyrocketed yep. 
for that yep. accomplishment. It makes me happy so. to see guys like that get it done. You know, you watch you're, you're watching a guy like Anthony Davis now, you know, trying to fucking get to LA and so him and LeBron, all, all this fucking bullshit. Yeah. You know, it's like oh, go 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 put in your fucking work. You just go put in your work yep. and shut the fuck up. Uh like Kawhi Leonard did. How 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 did it turn out for him? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I think it's neat. Hey John. Really neat, so, yeah. What an amazing show. I think we offered some great value. Make sure value. you share this with your friends, everybody, and value. subscribe yeah. if you're if you're a new listener. Uh, we, it's brought to you by NetSuite by Oracle. Ooh. I just sound really cool saying that, John. Uh, NetSuite is a monster business, and if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business, John. And right now, I know they're offering a, a valuable free Absolutely. guide of seven key strategies to grow your profits at netsuite.com slash biceps. That's netsuite.com slash biceps to download your free guide of seven key strategies strategies to grow your profits. You got to go there today profits. and download it. It's free, free 99. I John. love profits. And you do love and, profits. No, no, no. I, and I am a profit, but it's spelled differently. I'm a P-H-E-T. Okay. I love F-I-T. A, okay. Professor. I'm a dean. <laughs> Fucking yeah. JD, right. Johnny the Let's JTD, see. Johnny the Dean. Before JTMFD, you my boss. Johnny the motherfucking Dean. I can't believe that motherfucker called you because he knows what's professor. up in fucked the streets, up. dude. He knows what's up in this fuck fucking dude. streets, dude. Fuck that dude, guy. I fucking graduated right. from Harvard six times. <laughs> Johnny Fosco. Can the podcast be stopped? The podcast. Podcast. <laughs> Be stopped. Stop. I am the Dean, John. <laughs> oh, oh, oh.